Well, hello, everybody. I'm Ed Barco with Brian Galke, and we're Aces 53. Aces 53 is the attitude, commitment, enthusiasm, smile that you bring to the table and sells. The 53 stands for the first joker in the deck, which is about the joker, and the joker is that unique ability you have that you bring to the table and sells, or you learn to bring to the table with what, like, Brian teaches. For me, I sold by the phone for 18 years, and it was my voice because I had no idea I had a great deep voice for sales. I know. I mean, everybody's like, wow, you have a great voice. Sounds really good on the radio. Great. And look at where you are. Yeah, I'm in a home all by myself. Just kidding. Anyway, so uh, a lot of stuff been going on. Um, mm -hmm. I, we, I know you named it uh, books, networking, seminar, masterminds, TV documentaries, and all. But what you left off of there is podcasts. True. Uh, I think it's really important to one, have a podcast and two, be on other people's podcasts. Mm -hmm. I interviewed a guy yesterday. So I do two interactions on Wednesdays. My second one was a guy who was an attorney, compliance attorney. I'm like, this is going to be freaking boring as fuck. And I was like, so we started talking. And he's like, oh, yeah, I do uh, 60 podcasts. Uh, and so I was like, er, er, what? How the hell do you handle 60 podcasts? And he went through what they were. But he was a he was a trial attorney, and then he got into compliance, and he got into you know after after that, then he did some other things, and then he got into podcasting about 2012 to 2014, mm -hmm. and then in 18 he's like I either got to do this full time or just quit it because it's too much of a so he started went to all these different trade shows for compliance, and he's like this is what I do, and they're all like that's not how we handle our stuff. Our stuff is in person, trade shows, and then March of 2020 happened, right. And he gets, he said, my phone started ringing. They're like, what was that thing you wanted me to be on? Uh, and he got, I got, he went from five grand a month, to 35,000 a month within that first month. And he's been, and, and he's been growing ever since. And one of his biggest things he says to do, niche your podcast down as low as you can niche it down mm -hmm. and do it daily. Wow. Do it daily. Huh? Okay. Yeah. He's like, that's how it is. He goes, and he was explaining, cause that's what we did with real estate jerky. We knit, you know, uh, Mike and I do that one daily. We just talk about, you know, I talk about what's happening in the markets and with real interest rates and that kind of stuff. And he talks about what's happening with real estate and we, that's, we bullshit a little bit and we're done. Yeah. Well, and, and, a, and we did it for a year and I didn't put it as a podcast up until like 60 days ago. <laughs> Cause it was one of those things you're like, it's on live. Everybody can go right. see it there. Who cares? And then it was like, uh, why don't you put it this? Like they've said to us, why don't you put this as a podcast? So starting, right. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to do that. Well, that's uh, there's a guy named Ken Walls. He actually just moved from, I think he was in Ohio. Now he lives here in Texas, out in Salina. And uh, that's what his is. It's called uh, the Grow Live Academy. It's He goes suggests going live every day. And then um, the lady who just passed last month, Jessie Lee, she went live 713 days in a row. Didn't matter what it was. And it could be something as simple as when she was putting on her makeup anyway, she would sit in front of a camera and she would answer questions while she was doing it. So she was killing two birds with one stone, but that was the thing that she gives the most credit for growing her audience was that. Yeah. And he says, if you're going to do it, do it. Right. Be consistent. If you're going to be live at a certain time every day, be live at a certain time every day. If that's your podcast, you say you're going to drop it on Tuesdays, drop mm -hmm. it on Tuesdays. Right. Don't miss a day. Do whatever you don't miss. They want to know when they can come and see it being very consistent. And, you know, and that's important. Do you think that's people our age, though? But as younger people come in, that'll change because everything they've come with is on demand. So, I mean, like my daughter, right? She has no idea of having to wait for a Tuesday for a show to come on or anything like that. She's grown up in the on demand lifestyle of everything. So what you're saying is one of these days, he's going to be very disappointed and have to wake up and, and be like the rest of us and understand that it's not on demand. Those are all reruns that are on demand. Right. That's all what kids are used to, right? I know. They, yeah. But, you know, as a child, we then grow into an adult and then we take on, a, we get rid of our childish things and turn into adults. What's yeah, going to, you're right. Yeah. I mean, they'll still be for on demand. They won't have to, they, I mean, watch it's going to, it's going to be whatever this, the show, Think, even Netflix got to a point where we're not dropping them all anymore or we drop four and then you got to wait for the next four, which right. is pissing people off. But that's because we became that way. Uh, no longer. We go, you can go to the movie today and then in a month it's out on video already, not video, right. you know, downstream. And it's like, 
what happened to six months i'd have to go to movies at least for two months to see it oh don't lie you're just upset because you don't have to go to blockbuster anymore to wait to fight in line to get the movie you want to see right i never fought <laughs> i had to deal with the guy you had to deal with the guy he'd hide <laughs> one for you yeah exactly as long as you were to be kind and rewind yeah no i paid him extra to not so he could rewind it for me there you go hey you gotta know where your skill set is that's right well you gotta know what you're good at i'm good at talking i'm not good at rewinding it is funny to think that that's where things came from right is literally i think it was on tuesdays block but no sorry thursday is when you could give them a blockbuster you could buy them tuesdays at best buy and then you had to, and now, like you said, it depends. Like Max, Cinemax seems Cinemax and HBO merge now. You watch Cinemax? Yeah, the soft um, porn they stuff. They seem to have bought most of the movies. If it's not a Disney movie, obviously Disney does first showings of that. But it seems like the new Max has most movies that come out as soon as they come out. They come out on Tuesdays. They still release everything on Tuesday when it's going to be released that week. Well, but what's interesting, and, and that's the same with books too, right? With Max, Max, though, you can actually watch it before it's released. Um, Well, I guess you could buy it, but before you can rent it, Max will have it for a while, and then they'll stop showing it, and then you have to go to the Apple Store or whatever your choice is, and then you can actually rent the movie. But it's interesting because it won't be available for rent for a little bit, but depending on what streaming service you have, they may have it available for a short period of time. Well, talk to me after this, and I'll tell you a a secret because I'm not going to say it on this. (laughs) Do it. Don't do it now. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's other ways to be able to get those. And I'm not talking the ones that are dubbed in English. All right. Right. (laughs) But all right. So back to kind of what started this off. I I saw a post from a a guy named Brian Covey. who He was talking about the way he moved faster in life was he didn't just have a nine to five job. He started going to networking events. Then he'd go to seminars Then he joined masterminds. And you can compare people in the same industry as him. And that's what he said elevated him even higher. But what he was missing that I thought really you've come in with is he was missing books and he may have written one. I'm just not aware of it. But then he left out media like, are you on the news? Are you in documentaries on, you know, are you on regular TV? So we both know Janine. Janine is on court TV pretty regularly. But are you talking Janine Driver? Janine Driver. Yes. I don't know her, by the way. I only know her through you talking about her. Oh, okay. I thought for some reason you'd met her at one point. No, but, you've uh, never invited me to a place where she was at. Just okay, so well, you know. next Thursday or next Thursday and Friday we'll be in Nashville. You want to take oh, it? Sure, send me a plane ticket. No, no, a ticket to the event. <laughs> and a plane ticket, I'll be right there. Yeah. Um, so th- when she like TEDx is how one of the things that really made her go viral. She's constantly being asked to be on network news channels and then uh shows like she was on kelly ripa the other day but to your point one of her big ones that she did was mel robbins podcast tons of people got added to her following by being on mel robbins podcast but gonna, is i have no idea who mel robbins is really oh no, okay i'm lying to you yeah well you didn't know who janine was so <laughs> but you don't you always didn't... go in the same circles you know? true you're just you're, 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 you go everywhere now. I, I don't. Yeah. Well, and I'm that's more of one of the things that's helped me, right? It, yeah. it started out with networking, met Joe Ingram, and then through being in masterminds, that's how I met Brad. That's how I met Janine, you know, other people. And then where do you go from there is you can go to seminars and meet other speakers, follow them, you name it. Or like with you, you talked about being not just writing the book helped you out quite a bit. But Mm -hmm. being a part of the documentary, that's what sets you apart, not just an author, but being seen as on other credible media as well. You know, what helped me out more than anything was radio Mm -hmm. because you can't not be on radio and know what you're talking about. Sorry, I I hate to tell you this, but my George is right down here sleeping and he's snoring up. (laughs) So if you hear snoring, you're good. He's like, (laughs) (laughs) it's like, okay. Because uh, he's been so happy I've been working from home since Marsha went to work full time again. She's hating right. life. She gets home. I'm so tired. Yeah. Yep. It happens. Yeah. Well, and that's if you look right now, there's more of that going on. I know four people in the last month who've got laid off who were not low level positions, you know, and companies are laying off quite a bit. Things are changing like we've been talking about before. And that's why all this is even more important is. I used to be the worst about this, right? 21 years at a job, 21 and a half. 
And I didn't really go to any networking events or anything because I, I tended to like the profession I was in. But I realized now that was stupid. I should have been going to way more networking events, going to I, I've always been kind of a seminar junkie. I've always liked that, but I would never pull the trigger on masterminds or anything else. And that's also another way, because usually the people invest in masterminds, invest in themselves. Mm-hmm. And I've met just as many people in seminars and mastermind groups than I have going to any networking event. No, and it's a- important to go to different things outside your industry too just like all the stuff we were going to i might but i looked at the last five years i've went to so much shit Mm -hmm. that was time to implement it right and that's the problem is we go to a lot of stuff and we don't implement it didn't you go to the big podcast one in florida yeah that was two years ago two years ago and And that one i got a lot from because I, i i actually fell into the videos part of it Right. And they were talking about YouTube and all the different things. And then, you know, they said to s- separate all your stuff out. Like I, on my YouTube, I had everything underneath me and they were like, well, then your algorithm doesn't know what you're talking about. Well, now they've came with everything so you can be podcasts. Right. And so it doesn't right. mess with your algorithm. Well, I'm like, but that's, then I want to cut that up and put it in, a, in there. Cause you're supposed to do. So I still have like my inner Edison, which I've had for two and a half years. And I had so many, subs- I have like almost 13,000 subscribers with me. Now I'm about a hundred away. I've been growing again. I didn't grow forever cause I didn't do anything, but my inner Edison's off by itself and it's got mm-hmm. eight subscribers now. And that's it because yeah. it started over by itself. Right. I've, I have um, hundreds of thousands of downloads Right. right on the regular podcast it's a podcast but not the actual youtube channel so it's it takes time to redo it but i need to cut up more stuff and do all that so but and that's another thing there's just so many things you need to do and you need to hire people to do it right and like we've talked about learn enough to know when you're not being taken advantage of but also learn when it's time to, de- to delegate out something because you shouldn't be doing menial tasks if you can have if you have the money so what they always say is you either have money or you have time Right. So if you don't have any money, you have time. Go do a lot of this stuff yourself. We've been listing off tools, software to use that we've used, we've tested. If you have the money, pay somebody else to do it so you don't have to do it. But know when you're being taken advantage of or not. Right. And I finally found my high level guy. Did you? I'm. Oh, my uh, God. He's super excited. Uh, well, he's I'm, number. So if you have to call in for service on your uh, thing and ask you for call your number, your ID number, mm-hmm. he's nine. He's nine. Well, I talked to, it's when you said, I, um, I talked to Rob and Alex, I well, talked with him, uh, messaged with him yesterday and you know, their big events next week, the 20th. I thought it already happened. No, no, it's next no. week. And, uh, cause there's people coming in town. Henry will be here. Uh, Joel, who's been on the podcast will be here. Several other people we know are coming down. So I'm trying to figure out how can I stop by and say hi? Cause I have speaking gigs, 23rd, 24th, 26th, 27th. So that's why I didn't buy a ticket, but you just show um, up there. Yeah, well, I left my like, ba- I left my badge upstairs in the ho- in the hotel. Right. People like Perry Belcher are going to be here. Frank oh, Kern, right? And it's even huge. it's not, yeah. And that's the funny thing is nobody heard her go high level, you know, four years ago. So the fact that your guy knew about it, number nine, 2019, he was this when he got involved. Yeah, and he is just I. He's been on my rotary for ten years. Oh, I had wow. no idea. I'm like, you're you're worse than me is the most the secret. You can't be a secret with what you do. You right. need to tell people. He used to be a carpet cleaner when he first got out of the Navy. He joined, mm-hmm. he got out of the Navy. He, he goes, it was just easy to buy the serv- the thing and do it. But then he got into go high. What is it about carpet cleaners? I don't Rob, know, that's what Frank Rob, Rob, Joe Polish. Rob, right? Rob, Rob, Rob was Oscar. a carpet cleaner? Yes. Did not know that. Yes. And all these carpet polish. cleaner guys, they all went on to do some SEO and all this other stuff. And, and he's huge. So he's, he's like this, Ed, I know this stuff, like nobody's business. And then I'm like, why well, I need this. I need this book phone. I need this. He goes, do you have this stuff recorded from your book yet? I go, no, he goes, did it done now. I need it. And we're, and I've already sold him to so many people. He's so he mm-hmm. took over. Here's an easy example. We do rotary events. Mm-hmm. and you set it up and you tell everybody and people oh yeah i'm coming i'm coming and then they you know half half the people don't show up 
-hmm. we did our summer social and he used the technology through high level sent the QR, you know, Hey, here's a QR code, scan it. And it sent it. And then other, he did multiple things. People signed up, said they were coming. It reminded them so many times of the event. It was the mm -hmm. best event we've ever had. Wow. So much so that at the board meeting this week, we adopted him to take over everything and have it run through high level. Wow. And that's a huge thing because he goes, dude, everybody young is looking on Google to find where they want to go for rotary in this. I, and a prime example, I have my first transaction for my radio show. Uh, it was a kid who his dad said, start listening to this radio show. Cause I want you mm -hmm. to learn about real estate. and I want you to buy your first home. About three months later, he, he called me and we went through the thing and he bought his first home. That was five years ago. Yeah. He recently reached out to me saying, I've been watching your lives. You've been talking about Rotary. I want to join the civic organization. Can mm -hmm. I come to Rotary? So I'm just saying it's, it's these connections that you need to exploit and utilize. Right. Well, and, and that's kind of what we're talking about here is no matter what you do, it doesn't matter if you're an employee, you own a business or anything. Don't just be an employee or a business owner. Start going to events. Start building networks. They always, you know, no matter how you say it, it's, you know, your circle determines where you are. The, the top five people determines your life. You know, show me your circle. I'll show you your future. And then that whole your network is your net worth. I mean, there's so many different sayings about it. And it's true because every opportunity, I mean, you can stumble into a good paying job, but even then you have to network internally to get promotions. Right. You can't just be good at a job. You've got to network with the people in charge of promoting you to get promotions. Well, that's all about that's all about learning sales. If you don't know how to sell, you're never going to promote yourself. Right. But it's funny because even then, a lot of people stop with just what's in the nine to five and they don't look and think, I need to be going to networking events. I need to be going to seminars. I need to join masterminds. I need and, to be on radio. Know, I need to be on this. That's yes. you need to be the authority in your industry. Stop being the best kept secret. And I told somebody else the reason I was is I could only help so many agents. Yeah. Right now, and the the you know I'm the number three mortgage mm -hmm. person in my area. Mm -hmm. The number one guy's out of Sacramento. Wow. And he it's just because he has a region. He did his region, and Ralph's like, hey, we need to change this because you you have almost as much as him, and we need to make some adjustments and this. And I'm like, do whatever you need to do, dude. And yeah. then he's like, okay, here, you're gonna promote me. Well, he didn't realize I've been promoting him since the moment I found out he did this stuff because it's what we've been dealing with and trying to find somebody that we could trust to right. do this stuff. I'm like, you have no idea the amount of business you're gonna get from doing if once we get this all set up right yes because i had another company that i told you before that reached out to me that i'm doing through these leads and stuff but i hate it because i gotta talk to all these garbage i don't yeah. want I, that's not me i want when i did direct mail it was quality people calling qual, it was the the statements were perfect to get the right people to call right. i want that with what i would do over here so i'm mm -hmm. i finally went through all the stuff that they were saying and this, and I'm like, that's the worst thing to say. You're right. And they're getting, but they're getting people to engage. Yeah. They all use the same ads, but once you get inside of the funnel, the, what they words they're using and certain things they're using, I'm like, this is horrible. This needs to be changed. And I'm not going to change their stuff to make them better. I'm going right. to do it for me with Ralph. Well, that's what we talked about before. It's okay to have scripts, but you need to personalize them after that. So if mm -hmm. everybody's using a successful ad, that's fine. But what's going to make yours just personalize it for you and your business, right? Correct. Uh, I, I think I've told this story before, but I, I can't sure. remember here. Probably I repeat myself a lot. Yeah, you do. There was a kid who was selling hot tubs, and there was a, he was in. Yes, the, you've said this story multiple times. Yeah. got on YouTube, made videos about it, right. and became very successful. Yeah. Was that the story? That's the one. Yes. I mean, because it's a Yes, you've said thing. that about five times since we've been doing the show. Well, what else? I mean, it's literally hot tubs. And but what did he do? Is he went and personalized himself, not just in his job. And so it's the simplest example of if you use this stuff, you can make you can change your life. Well, he and but the difference is he's in sales. Right. You should be promoting you, period, all the time. Because you you know, as much as as a somebody who uses salespeople for doing what they're doing. I want them to be successful if that's either with me or not with me. So whatever but works for them. People are taught that most people aren't right. Most people are taught shut down, uh, sit down, be quiet, work hard. You may get promoted. And I was trying to look. 
there's well, a that's book like on- you need to pat yourself on the back on everything and get that information out to what you've done, which is totally different than what we tr- we want to do. Right. right. We just want to do well. Leave me the fuck alone and let me go enjoy my life. My 3% a year or whatever. Uh, there's a book I'm reading right now called Steal the Show. And it's by uh, Michael Port. And that's the first thing that he started the book off with is, you know, we're taught not to talk about ourselves, not to network, not to do anything, but put your head down, work hard and really don't let other people, you know, what is it like most people raised as kids be seen and not heard. Yeah. And kids that, should be seen, not heard. That's great. Right. And that's just, just do your hard work and you'll, you'll succeed. And that's not the reality of the day and age we live. We live in the day and age of the squeaky wheel being the most successful. And the most annoying still they're the most successful right well if yeah that's because if you look at politics right for yep. example most of us in the middle they're yep. just those little fringes on the side that are obnoxious that yes. gets the most that we hear the most right and they're the smallest mm-hmm. but they get the most attention on things Unfortunately. it's just a, it's a different world right like it used to be even in school is everybody be quiet don't listen to the class clown now it's the class clown who's the most successful because people know who they are versus if you're not the valedictorian who are you in school i was a class clown there you go i've been at the back table on rotary for years and the problem is all the back table is becoming the presidents now Uh, and and i'm growing my rotary which has been amazing to see the difference in just having fun and enjoying and you know just just the change i mean we normally we're 72 70 some members and we're starting to get more people to want to join our rotary Mm -hmm. and meetings we normally we have tables set up for 64 and we were probably 48 i'm pushing 55 so you know what rotary is for anybody who's joining who's not in rotary how would you explain it it's a service organization, service above self. Basically, Rotary was started by business people back in the day to get together and have a meeting and do good for the community. And it's gotcha. it evolved since then, but pretty much most clubs are 85% business owners. And then you have nonprofits and then you have um, teachers and other things. Gotcha. And because it's about I, I, connecting and helping out the community. So it's like another the, mastermind or, or networking group. Uh, that gets it's a, it's, it is, but for a while there, you, you don't go there and go, I want to get business from you. It doesn't work right. that way. It's about doing good. And then you go, Oh, what do you do? Oh, okay. Let's work together. That kind of stuff. Yeah. And and exactly. that's a huge difference. Like um, my rotary this year, since I'm president, I'm, I put aside 25 grand for veteran causes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I gave 2,500 to the first guy who came, who was the one from prisons who helped vets never go back to prisons. But I'm also doing um, April, bear with me here, 4, 3, 13, April 13th this year, a fire walk for vets. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, so we'll get help them with their PTSD or whatever their funk is. You know, right. it might not be PTSD, just might need to get their purpose back. And so we right now I have enough. I've set aside enough to have for 100 vets to walk. My mm-hmm. goal is 300 veterans. So we got to wow. grow it and have it set up. So um, I got to get work, start working on all this stuff. And definitely I told Ralph, the guy who does the, I go, you're going to be involved because you set up amazing party. You've set mm-hmm. up expectations here and I need you to get involved to do this. And of course he said, yes, because he's a veteran too. So yeah. Now is rotary veteran based or is it no. just happened to be a lot of veterans in rotary? No, there's about 5%. Really? Cause every time I've ever talked to anybody who's former military, a lot of them are in rotaries. So I just because it was- just it's just a lot of uh, vets are business owners. Yeah, figure that one out. Well, I, I read we can't you know why? Because we can't work for other people anymore after what we went through. Where they're like, "Fuck these idiots." Where On the going? opposite side of the scale, I read something that said like sixty percent of CEOs or C level had former military at some point in their life. Well, you get taught st- SOPs, how to create standard, uh, standardized operation procedure manuals. You know how to, mm-hmm. s- your attention to detail. First thing they teach you is how to make a bed. And you're like, why the fuck does Because the teaching the attention to detail is the first right. thing. It's all you learn. And the negative side of all of it is, uh, ask your, my wife, where do I sit? He sits where you can see the exit. Right. But a lot of people, you know, that's just, I want to know if somebody's going to come in just in case, not that they mm-hmm. might, but, but, you know, I've seen sh- movies. Well, I used to work with military, or, sorry, uh, not military, law enforcement, as you know, 
And that was the same thing. I knew if we were going to lunch, they were always going to sit where they want to see it. It makes sense if you've ever been in that environment. Right. So well, it's either want sneak your military, up law enforcement, or your gangster, <laughs> right? So two of the three are good ones. Yeah. But yeah. Well, yeah. No, but it's just so with, for us, Rotary, there's like Rotary, there's Lions Club, there's, a, you know, then there's the Elks Lodge, and there's, right. you know, and then there's a bunch of smaller veteran organizations also. For me, I was looking at them and Rotary, my Rotary meets in the morning for breakfast, mm-hmm. which is perfect for me. I don't want to go to lunch and be gone for two hours. <clears throat> Right. But I can do the two hours in the morning because I can get up earlier. And being president of you this year has allowed me to, I run the meeting like it's a production, dude. And right. I mean, I'm most presents in the fact that seven, at 7.30, they're sitting down having their breakfast. Right. I, they give me breakfast to go. That's how yeah. I don't even have time. So I have speakers, but they speak for about 20 to 25 minutes. Well, right. that goes by so fast, but I'm walking all over talking. I have a walking mic, which everybody hates because I, I walk all over the the thing. I don't stand up front like a lot of the presidents do and just like, oh, I have a, no, I got to get involved. You know, right. I got to, I got to connect with everybody. So we have a good time. Jokes, fun, recognitions. So um, I, I'm trying to think there's one I was just at yesterday. So uh, success North Dallas is a networking group and mm-hmm. it is Dallas professionals. They do the same thing. They meet from seven to nine in the morning because they figure people can go into work late, but if they did it in the middle of the day, you can't. And then a lot of people have obligations. So there's something else that um, there's a, in Dallas called C-suite. Now they're actually all over the U S but they meet in Dallas the same day as the mornings for success North Dallas. And it's some people have to get kids off to school in the morning, but their nights are free. Some people have mm-hmm. their mornings free, but their nights are busy. And so those two organizations do have a, a little bit of cross pollinization but either way, there are events that networking, you know, masterminds, things that you can join. Uh, like there's some people, Janine Driver does a, one, a class every few weeks on Mondays at night. And then our friend Joe, he does uh, four o'clock my time. So two o'clock Pacific, he does war games. Right. And so you can find if you go out and search or ask Ed or I, what are different types of events, networking groups that you can join to expand your circle? Right. Because between you and I, we've gone to a ton of them. Right. I mean, Steve Sims group is good. Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, yeah. in, in I mean, weeks. and yeah, I yeah. mean, there's a bunch of people been in it and they're like, ah, you know, it's the same thing. I'm not coming back. Well, I'll come right. back. It's just not working for me this year. Right. Well, and there's some people who take what they just go to one a year because, you know, he has two a year. Some people he go. Did, he, had three, three. he had three a year. See, I went I, from I, I went from the beginning. Yeah, I went. I was I went three a year for five years, and so I took one year off. Give me a break. Yeah, well, and I just had actually a five year anniversary of when I met him at yeah. um, Todd Duncan's place. It was just oh, really? in September. Yeah, yeah. It might not be coming like, up on two years. I think. Yeah, Todd. Dun- I met him at Todd Duncan's. Didn't really know him, but it was uh, he was spe- he spot came talk you spoke there and then they had a little get together in the vip room upstairs it was just todd duncan's little vi uh, vip area in his right. penthouse suite or whatever and he, i just listened to him and then i walked the camino de santiago right after that yeah and so the following april and that's when i listened to his book and everything else and and you know and he's done a lot and he's helped me a lot and also but it's just you need to even though you get this mentor who's there to gr- help you grow you outgrow them to a certain point. You need to keep going and then, and then come back. You know, there's Absolutely. so many things you need to keep learning and just keep bringing back to the table. And I've learned so much from what they did from me and then how I'm doing it better than what was done just because of what they, you know, it's just one of those things. Absolutely. Well, you know, I took with Steve, he was my speaking coach and I'm still picking up books on speaking. Why? Cause you don't take and follow just one person's advice. I mean, I'm still in Steve's different mastermind, but I'm picking up, from anyone I can learn from, right? And to your point, go to things outside of your industry. Go to things that you want to learn about, podcasts. There was just one in Dallas, um, yeah. Vid City, Vid something. There's so all many about- all over. There's one in LA yeah. that just happened. There's one in Florida. I just don't want to fly eight hours to Florida. You know what I mean? That right. whole trip. It's well, it's a lot. Going there that day, you lost the whole day. Coming back, you make up some of it. But- sure. And if you're going strictly for content, don't go. Because they're going to sell the recordings afterwards, and it's usually the same price as the ticket. You don't have to the, pay. They didn't sell the content. What's that? The one I used to get, Podmatch. They didn't sell the content. 
They didn't. Oh man, a lot of the ones I'm seeing this day and age are, you know, let's say it's 199 to go. Well, you can buy the recordings afterwards for 199 as well. But you're missing out on the networking part, mm-hmm. which can be a huge thing. I mean, you and I met through Steve's Speakeasy, right? So mm-hmm. we are an example of networking that can turn into business things to do with other people. That's what you're missing if you're going strictly for content. So um, like you just mentioned, you've taken several courses recently, right? And that's where you're going for content versus the networking, which all those apply. But at some point, if you want to get your name out there, it's not just so social media consistency, which we talk about. It's you need to get in front of people in numerous ways, books, networking, masterminds, attend seminars, talk to people on the lunches, you know, and then if you get featured in things like you did, you know, put that out there to the world. Because if the media introduced you, so like um, I was on Court TV with Janine, if you don't think I didn't plug the hell out of that, yes. Why? Because it was Court TV. You know, it's not something I watch normally, but that's another way that says, okay, you have to know your stuff if somebody's willing to interview you in a public forum. Right. Now you and may, yeah. You have to be comfortable and you have to be comfortable. You need to be doing it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it's been nice when so many people that I interview on podcasts, they go, man, you really know what you're doing. And I really appreciate it. I've done that. You know, they also have done hundreds of these. And a yeah. lot of time you're like, you have no idea what you're doing. And right. it's like, it, it's been, and it's like, I want to, f- I d- have no agenda in the, what I'm doing, I don't have, here's my 10 questions I'm going to ask you. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. I, the guy that I did, that I was talking about that did the podcast from the beginning. I had no idea we were going to talk about podcasts when I got into that. I thought it was yeah. going to be compliance and attorney stuff. And I was just going to be, this is going to be boring as shit. And I don't know how to fix it. And no, it was complete opposite. It was like the best one I had in the last month. Yeah. And it's funny. You, you just never know. Well, some people are divas, right? They'll send you the questions they want you to ask them ahead of time. And they don't want you to deviate from that at all. Now, on the opposite side, I've had hosts who send me the questions and sometimes I'll read them. And then sometimes I go, no, nah, let's not read them. Just gamble with it. <laughs> you know, so. No. I, and if someone's, I don't want them on. Yeah. Because that's not a true conversation. Right. Like today we were scripted. Mm-hmm. Ha ha ha. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, our script our script was uh books networking seminars masterminds and tv documentaries that right. was our script and then we started off with podcasts <laughs> right it wasn't even in there <laughs> exactly so all right yeah. and, and go ahead i'm sorry oh no i was just gonna say just i'm a huge fan of attending those things and as an introvert i appreciate you helping me with a lot of those because you were running around like my hype man at several of the events we went to at Greg's secret knock and everything else. So Dude, my whole thing was to get you in front of people and show them what you could do. So it'd help you. I'm yeah. all about, and that's the one thing about Ralph. He's he had, we had a huge lunch. We were talking, I was dude, all you do is help everybody else. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, but it helps me by doing that. Cause if you look at all the lives I do, it's to help that agent to get their information out there. And Absolutely. this we do together. I it's, I'm here helping you. You're helping me, but it's all about helping the other person and seeing what we can do out of it. And that's exactly. how you get, you get more in life by giving. That's what rotary is. So when you ask me, what is rotary? It's mm-hmm. giving and then you will receive by giving period. Awesome. Yeah. I think it's take a good note to close out on. You can take us out today. I can. All right, Ed. Well, thank you for being here today. Everybody watching. We appreciate it. If you like it, subscribe. Even if you don't, go ahead and subscribe. That's and listen right. Because I'll still be here. We can get rid of it. <laughs> That's right. Um, so Ace is 53 on YouTube, basically everywhere else. Ed Parco. Of course, I'm Brian Galke, and we'll see you all next week. Yep. Thank you for being right. here. Appreciate you. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, I think so. You hitting the right. button? Yeah, I hit it. I have all the power. Bye.